Happy New Year everybody! This is another vlog. Thank you so so much for tuning in as always. Let's start 2021 right shall we? So some lovely lovely people out there have requested a vlog all about reflections and how to actually write reflections for assignments and I thought this was actually a really good one to do because unless someone tells you what to do and how to do it and things like that how do you know how to write a reflection for an assignment if that makes sense and hopefully they're teaching you how to do this out there and giving you some tips and pointers out the way but if not don't worry I'm here I'm going to try and help you as best I can in this vlog fingers crossed so my first tip for this is think of it like any other assignment. So you want to make sure it's got good structure and, and to help you with this structure for your reflection, it's always good to use a reflective cycle. So for me, I always use Gibbs just because I found it the most easiest to follow. And there was a lot of research out there on it and there was a lot of information on the Gibbs cycle and how to write it. So this is why I use the Gibbs cycle, just because it was easier for me. But I know a lot of people use Driscoll and there's a lot more other reflective cycles cycles out there if you want to use them have a little look around and find the best one that suits you and as with any assignment with the structure you're going to have a start a middle and an end just like the rest intro main body conclusion and this is kind of what you're going to be doing with your reflection so the, the beginning of it is going to be okay what happened the little bit of a descriptive bit and then your main body is going to be explaining a bit more detail so why is this relevant why is this relevant to the nmc code of conduct for example you're gonna go to things like policies and procedures and nice guidelines building that evidence up on why it's really important and why you've recognized this situation that you're reflecting on as a high importance if that makes sense so for example in one of mine, I wrote about uh, a day where we were really, really short staffed. We were so short staffed. Uh, there was two nurses to 29 patients on the ward. And it was quite a tough time, to be honest. That was one of my last uh, shifts on a ward. So I thought I would use this to reflect on because it was a really good situation to reflect on because actually even though it wasn't um, a great situation to be in especially as a student nurse it was actually a really good learning experience and the day went really really well despite everything so it had two components to the day so I thought this would be really good to write critical analysis on and show the good sides and the bad sides what went bad what went wrong what went well all of that jazz and then come to a conclusion on how I'm going to put that in future practice because that's what your conclusion is all about it's okay so you've had your beginning what's happened you've had your main body okay this is why this is relevant this is why it's important according to the nmc code of practice and the nursing midwifery council guides and standards and procedures and nice guidelines and all that jazz and this the ending the conclusion and this is how i'm going to then improve my future practice i'm going to be doing this this and this i'm going to put this in place and this is going to make me a better nurse as a result done and you can pick anything to be your reflection um it doesn't ma doesn't always have to be a bad thing you can always reflect on something that went really really well and you think wow i really want to reflect on this and write about it and so then you would just it'd be exactly the same structure so what happened and then your main body is going to be all about why is this a good thing and relate it again to the nmc code of conduct the standards procedures policies and nice guidelines and all of that jazz all of your trust guidelines whatever you want to throw in there to back up what why it's going good and um why it's important that it's going well and that situation it happened how then how can you improve and uh maintain that for future practice so it's not about uh, improving as such and changing practice it's about okay how do i keep going and keep doing this what steps am i going to put in place to make sure that this happens again and again and i build and improve for other patients in my future practice and then we move on to referencing. So we, I know when we were at uni, there was a lot of torn things about referencing a reflection because it is your own personal experiences. Um, but we were always told we have to have to reference. And that's where your main body bit comes into play, because you're going to be referencing the NMC code. You're going to be referencing the government. You're going to be referencing NHS England. You're going to be referencing Public Health England. You're going to be referencing the NICE guidelines and policies and procedures and hospital trusts and all that jazz. So, yes, you can put references in there. And not only that, 
However you're feeling as a student nurse, there's someone has probably wrote that somewhere. So literally just have a Google, get onto your libraries, your online libraries and things like that. And literally just put in a few keywords, bring it up like student nurse, staff shortages, whatever, student nurse feelings, I don't know, just put it all out there and you will find someone has written an article somewhere like for the Nursing Times, for example, is a good one um, for best in practice, things like that. Elsevier website, I think has got some really good blogs as well. Nurses.co.uk have got some blogs and things like that on there as well. And the RCNI or RCN Student um, Network, I think it is, they do a lot of good articles as well from students. So use that and put that into your um, explanations and back that up with your references and say, okay, well, this is how other people feel as well. This isn't just me. This is how this person felt in this article. It's, it's quite easy to reference. You just have to get your head around it and put it in and get used to it. It is hard to start with, but once you get your head around of it, around it, you'll think whole differently about it and you'll really get into it, I hope. So just to give an example, so for mine, with my staff shortages, I felt really, I think, very nervous about it. I didn't know what to expect. I thought more was going to be expected of me because I was a student nurse and there was short staff and I had to be thrown in at the deep end kind of thing. So I looked around that to see if anyone else had felt this and felt and had this sort of, sort of same experiences and wrote an article about it. And there was articles about it. So I threw those in there and I just backed up what I was saying to say, OK, I'm not the only person out there that this has happened to because in this article, this student explains blah, blah, blah. And it's a common thing out there. And then you go into your main body about, okay, why is this important? So this is important because the NMC says as a student nurse, um, you should not be counted in the numbers. So you shouldn't be used and abused when it's short staffed, for example. And then, however, on the other side, if you're confident, competent to do so, you can help out and you can do those things to help out. So it's weighing it up. So that's your pro and that's your con and that's critical analysis in a way. So that gave me my overall conclusion because, OK, even though you're not supposed to be counted in the numbers according to the NMC and you're supposed to be doing this and learning and things like that. However, on the other side, it does say as long as you're competent, confident to do so and your mentor's happy with and you've got the supervision there still from afar, then you are safe to do whatever, not whatever you want, but whatever you're trained to do, you can do. So in my situation, I felt confident, confident to go out there, to help out, to take on my own patients, to manage it myself with the supervision of my mentor from afar. So I still had that mentor there in the next bay. And actually it turned out really, really well. And it turned out like a good day because I'd focused on my autonomy and I built on that and my the skills that I could do, I built on that. And it just turned out to be in conclusion, a really, fantastic shift and actually I built a lot from that and so then for my conclusion I would then I then put in that okay going forwards I can use all of these skills as a newly qualified nurse um, I know that I've got the autonomy now because I had that confidence to do that and take my own patients and caseload so I, I put little bits from what I'd learned from that day and how I would use that as a newly qualified nurse going out there into practice and it just tied in really nicely and it flowed nicely like that so I'm hoping that these tips are going to make yours flow nicely like that. So just some little basic rules around writing your reflections for an assignment. It's really important that you keep it confidential. So do not mention the trust that you worked out, the ward that you worked at. Do not mention any names in your assignment. Literally keep it as minimal as possible because you don't want to break confidentiality and fail as a result. So for example, the ward that I worked on was an orthopedic ward. I can say I worked on an orthopedic ward, but I can't say the name of the hospital, the ward number, the trust, anything like that, or the names of my mentors I literally just said I was working on an orthopedic ward and my mentor and that was it <laughs> I didn't use any names any trust names anything like that and it's the same actually when on social media for example so in my YouTube videos or on my Twitter or Instagram anything like that I will never tell you the location of actually where I work and that's purely to maintain confidentiality because no one can pinpoint 
where I'm talking about or what patients I'm talking about or what colleagues I'm talking about because nobody knows. People just know I work in Portsmouth. So that's it. And there's millions of GPs in Portsmouth that I could be working at. So that's a, a massive tip. Just do not put any names in your assignments. No. The only time you can reference uh, a name or a trust is if you're digging out a policy or procedure for a particular trust. And then you can put, OK, uh, guys in St Thomas hospitals, they've got a lot of really good policies and guidelines. Uh, 2018 says this, this and this. You can use it then. But if you're talking about your own personal experience, you cannot tell anybody the trust you're working at anything because it's confidential and you need to lock that in. <laughs> The next little rule is we were always told that for your reflection, you can use I. So you can be in first person for the, the beginning of your your reflection because you're talking about yourself, your own experiences. So that's OK to do that. But then as I went into my main body, I went into third person um, and I just put it into that sort of perspective. So I was using NMC code and things like that to talk about my experiences. And then in the conclusion, I switched back to first person. So I was like, OK, so going forward, this is what I'm going to do. Um, and that's just the way we were told that we could do that. And that was fine. So please, before you do anything, as always, check with your university's assignment brief guidelines. And it should tell you quite clearly, hopefully, what you should be doing. And if you can use the word I or if you have to write it in third person. So to get those extra marks for your reflection assignment, I would advise to go a lot more in depth. So you're not just saying, OK, this happened and this happened. You're explaining why that's important. You're explaining, OK, how did that make you feel? You're explaining why did you feel that way? OK, and you're going, you're always asking yourself, OK, why? Why is that? Why am I saying this? Why do I feel like this? You keep asking and you keep digging to unravel the layers of what's happening like an onion. You're unra unraveling all of the layers of you and your assignment um, and you're explaining a little bit more. But not only that, you want to add all of the critical analysis like we've spoke about already. You want to just be critical of everything basically and you want to show the good you want to show the bad why is this important okay this is great what's the conclusion you want to be as critical as possible we told we were told that we should have a critical analysis in every paragraph so just try and work it that way if you can and then lastly good references you want to show your wider reading because wider reading means more points means prizes so yes good references good quality references get the research to back it up don't just put uh, google.com in your references because you're not going to get anywhere with that you'll probably get deducted points for that so please use good quality references you want to use research papers you want to use articles you want to use journals all the good stuff in there obviously the nmc has to be in there um and government policies and procedures and guidelines can all be in there. They are good quality references. It's just about using those good references well in your assignment to get those points and show wider re reading. And to be honest, when I got the hang of my references, I had referen a reference for every like 50 words. That's how I worked it out. I would have reference, 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 every single 50 words. I knew that I was going to have a reference because any, any statement you make or anything you say that's quite bold, you need to have a reference. So um, if you're saying, for example, I need to gain confidence as a nurse because this, this and this. OK, why? Where's that reference come from? How do you know that? So you need to back it up with a reference to say this is why. Um, and that's going to get you some pretty bonus points, hopefully. And the way I would work out the marking for my own assignment is I would have the assignment brief first up. You should always have your assignment brief in the background and tick off the bits that you're putting in so that you know you're meeting all of the assignment brief. Next, you want to get the marking criteria up because you want to know what you're aiming for and what grade you're aiming for. So I would always go to the top grade possible because the worst I can do then is just fall back a bit. So I, I know if I'm hitting off those marking criteria at, at the top grades, I know that I'm going to get a, a middle to a higher sort of end mark, if that makes sense. But if I don't do it well, then I'll hit the lower marks. But I know that I'm hitting the, cri the marking criteria at least. Don't just go for the lowest grade. Come on, guys, go for the highest grade, do as much as possible, and then you'll get a decent mark.
And I always give this tip to people, even if you're just writing a regular assignment, because the person marking your paper, this is all they're going to have in front of them. They're going to have the assignment brief, they're going to have the marking criteria, and they're going to have your assignment. And they're just going to go by those two. So the more you can hit those marks, the better for you, because that's exactly what they're doing. So just go on those and you'll be absolutely well away. And lastly, to end this vlog, I'm just going to quickly, briefly, very quickly do a little bit on critical analysis because I know a lot of people struggle with this. I did do a whole vlog on critical analysis. Go and check that out. Um, but just quickly, a lot of people overthink critical analysis. Honestly, it's really, really simple. Don't overthink it. It's literally the pros and cons of something. Honest to God, I always think of it like buying a mobile phone. If you're looking at the different makes and models, the different colours, the different specs to make your decision on which phone to buy that's critical analysis you've got it guys you do it every day when you're purchasing things in the shops <laughs> there's just literally you are the, the middle person looking on the outside of something or a situation or something you're writing and you're okay they're the pros they're the cons what's good about it what's bad about it done critically analyzing something done please don't overthink it that's all you have to do please don't panic about it so much that's it so I think that's everything. I can't think of anything else that I can guide you on reflections. But if I've missed anything out or there's something that you would like a little bit more on, please comment below and I'll try and do something. I don't know, but I'll try and help you the best I can. Um, but that's it for me. Happy New Year again to all of you. It is going to be a rough start to the year, let's face it. But hopefully by the end of 2021, we're going to be on the up and onwards and it's going to be good. Fingers crossed. I've got high hopes for the end of 21, but a massive good luck to you all. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, guys, and I shall see you next week.